investment. Now, there are two models of this, where learning by doing, and when there's an explicit investment required. They really don't, I'll show you, they're very similar in fundamental structure. So, one, but you, you automatically learn from work. It's not uncommon, so you, you work as an intern, you learn something. The other, you kind of take some of your time when you're working to get more specific skills, and uh, then you have that uh, knowledge. Okay. Now, one of the problems with dealing with uh, investment on the job is a data problem. Now, why is that such a problem? Jane and Yang, 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 where is she? Yeah. Yang. That's to do with selection. With what? Selection. Selection? Well, there is selection, but something more fundamental. Uh, if I asked you to tell me, how much training is there in the U.S. economy, aside from education, on the job training? Uh, where would you go to look that up? Okay. okay, you'd go to the company, you say. Good. And what would you look at in the companies? You studied accounting, I right? Not really, but <laughs> well, maybe you should have. Um, what would you look at in companies? <laughs> now, have you looked? Have you ever looked at a company balance sheet? Yeah. Okay. What do you, you know? Would you find a line that says uh, uh, expenditures this year on investing in my workers? No. You, you won't. Um, you won't. Or if you look at the wealth of the company, you won't find a line or lines that say how much the company has invested in its workers. And the reason you don't find these lines is that companies are not required to report how much they've spent on investing in workers. They can deduct that all as labor expenses immediately, write it all off. With capital, the reason you find lines is how much I've spent on capital equipment is because I have to depreciate that capital for tax purposes over time. But for tax purposes, I can deduct all my expenditures on human capital. And so companies may have some internal books that they keep, but they don't publish those sort of books. Now maybe they should be publishing them and have a better information. How much are they, what's the rate of return on their investments? A lot of companies say they're investing a lot in their workers, but you ask them what's the rate of return, they usually don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. Learning by doing. Right, exactly. All right. I was, I was going to show you how the company would know that. Just hold that for a moment. Okay. Uh, good question. Uh, but they can know that. Any, anything, anything else? So that's the Companies aren't allowed, required to keep this. If they weren't required to keep capital accounts for their plant and equipment and other investments, they, they would tend, uh, might not keep those as separate accounts either might do it for their own purpose, or maybe not. They're required to do because they have to depreciate that over time. So they have to know how much capital do I have now, how much did I buy last period, and therefore that means I could take off this amount this year for my taxes. They don't have to do that with human capital. Now they should be keeping books on this and should be knowing what they're getting. And it's a puzzle to me why more companies don't keep internal information on that. But mostly they don't. All right, so it's hard to get that information. So economists have to be a bit of detective 
in, in this, in estimating it. Sometimes, you know, you, you have data in various surveys that say how much time you spend in training, and, some, and so you have that data, people try to construct uh, estimates from that, or companies may have uh, some records on how much time their workers are spent in spent that training. Um, this could be explicit training, or it could be, you know, the workers are learning while working, and they're not that efficient, so you have to try to tease that component out. And I'll show you how you can do some of that. Now, if workers paid for their training, workers paid for their training, how would they do it? Well, an obvious way is they get lower wages while they're being trained. Okay. So, and what's their benefit? They get higher wages later on. So if you think of the following. Suppose if I didn't take any training, I would get this. So this is by age, let's say, or experience, or tenure. These are the wage rates. Now, if I take training and I'm paying for it, the wage, I'll get a lower wage start with down here. And later on I'll get a higher wage. And whether it's a good investment depends upon the comparison of those two areas, discount, right? So if I'm paying for my training, I take I, and if work is paying for it, the most direct way they pay for it is by taking lower wages while they're being trained, maybe over a, a series of years. And in return they get higher wages later on. That's very simple idea, but it's very fundamental to understand what goes on in the training market and in the labor market more generally. Okay. Now, I had training occurring at younger ages. Why should that be? <coughs> you don't know? Oh, that way you have a longer period of time to... One, okay, you have a longer period of time to collect it. Uh, that would be certainly one factor, right? And if you if you want to become more skilled, you might as well become more skilled quicker rather than later for partly that reason. So uh, there's more years remaining, and um, it may be necessary in order to work to get your skills, in order to work at various jobs, you have to get them right away. So it makes a lot of sense. Just like you get education when you're young, you, you get your training. Now you notice what this does is it, it gives a slope to the age earnings, age or experience earnings profile. You steepen it. One of the important properties in, if you look in labor markets, is that older workers earn more than younger workers. One interpretation of that is it's because older workers have made more investment in their on-the-job training. And as a result, they're more skilled. And they are more skilled. Old workers are generally more skilled. And maybe the very old workers, their skills appreciate and their earnings go down again. And you do find uh, that some decline in earnings at later ages. Okay. So skills depreciate. You can invest, but they also depreciate. So it's pretty simple to understand why uh, age earnings profiles slope up with, with a human capital model. And uh, you can estimate the degree of, uh, from this you can invest. If this was your picture, then without knowing, you can kind of get an estimate with a little maneuvering of how much is being invested at different points in time. Like initially, this amount would be invested 
later on, you've got to be a little more careful because your potential earnings may be higher. So, but you, knowing something about that, how much, how much investment it, it, and what it does to your earnings, then you can get an estimate of what, how much is done here and here, and you, you add those up. Okay. It's not quite the area on the, the that, that triangle that determines the aggregate amount of investment, but you use that triangle to estimate. That's how people th have done it to some extent. Looking at what they could be getting, what they are getting, make the difference being the investment they're currently making. And that's fundamentally what's, what's going on.